we've been off for what week or so, uh, but we are um, in the process of getting healthy. I think get Angel's ankle 100%. Michaela's back to you know being healthy. Just get a little bit more shape, and then Poa and um, you know it's. It's that time of year where you want to be playing your best basketball, and I really, I really thought during the SEC tournament we were. Was it the uh, toughness that your team displayed there in Greenville? That oh, I think it was toughness. I think it was talent. I think it was uh, will to win. Uh, I think it was leadership. I saw a lot of what it takes to win. Um, and if you do that and you get beat along the way, then that team just did it a little bit better than you. Could you speak to the importance of hosting and, and why it's so critical, you think? Well, it's, it's important because um, it's really a reward for your year. Um, it's a reward for um, what you've done, your entire body of work. And then I think it's important that um, fans, our fans get to see us potentially two more games. And um, I know that um, our atmosphere will be, um, there won't be any better in the country. It'll be as good as anywhere in the country as far as atmosphere. Um, certainly you'd rather play on your home court than be on the road. So after um, the first and second rounds, those of us who get to host um, will then go potentially try to win two more on the road. We saw Michaela without the boot tonight. How is she feeling? She's great. She's doing good. Been practicing full speed. Big reaction with the Louisville being sent here. What do you think Haley's going through right now, the pull on that? Well, it, it was everybody smiling at her. And, you know, Haley's, Haley's a baller. I'm sure there will be lots of questions asked by you guys if that matchup should happen. Uh, should happen. Uh, and she'll answer it beautifully like she always does. Um, she had a great career there and three wonderful years, and she graduated with a finance degree, and she's now an LSU Tiger and came here to to um, play her final year, um, if it is her final year of basketball. Um, but Middle Tennessee is pretty salty too. A former All-American of mine is an assistant coach there. And... Um, Rick Enzel's a Hall of Fame coach and um, got a pretty good re uh, first and second round here. Now, I don't know if Rice won the league or won the tournament. Maybe you guys know. Just the tournament. Who won their league? Yeah, I, I don't – I didn't know that. Um, so thanks for letting me know. But let's go. Let's play. Kim, I know after 31, 32 games, you no longer look at Michaela and Aaliyah and that group as freshmen anymore. But when you get to this point in the year, how excited do you get as their coach to get their first taste of, of what March basketball is like? You try as a coach when you've done it many times, you try to stay as excited as you were the first time you ever um, coached in, in an NCAA game or in a postseason game. And um, – you do it for those young ladies because not all of them in that locker room have ever done it before. And so you're excited for them. And so when we get in the film room tomorrow and we get on the court, um, we'll do our usual cut up and then get to work. But yes, that's why they came here. That's why they came here. They want to taste that postseason, and uh, uh, it's just fun time now. Uh, Coach, this time of year, would you describe it as heroes, big moments? What, it, what makes this time of year special when you get into the tournament and you need to win? I think for years on the men's side, it was the Cinderella story. I thought for many years you didn't have those stories in women's basketball because the dominant teams were always dominant. I think now because of the transfer portal, I think you're seeing uh, more parity. So maybe this time of year you'll start seeing each year on the women's side, maybe you'll see a Cinderella story. I don't know if you'll see them, you know, go as deep as the men's tournament has through the years, but 
I think you're going to see some upsets. You're going to see some people that um, have transferred in and out of programs that make programs better or worse. And just a quick follow-up, what, what are your thoughts on, you know, Spokane and Portland and the way this thing is so spread out with the geography and everything? Albany, Albany. excuse me. Um, it worked last year, so um, – I'm a firm believer you have to have first and second round games on home courts. We've tried other, we've tried to do it other ways. It's not going to work. Um, your your best crowds, um, and and that's what you want are first and second round games to be on home courts. Um, going to what we do now with the two regional sites, um, I don't know that it's bad. I don't know that I've studied it enough to have a better option. Um, so I don't even know where it's being played in Albany. Does anybody know what arena? MVP. And that's connected to the city. Uh, okay. That, do you know how many it seats? Twelve and thirteen. Coach, your returners like Angel and Flage, what do you think the experience of going all the way last year, what do you think it taught them, and how do you think they can apply that to, to this year's run? I think it taught them um, what it takes to get there, what it feels like when you do get there. Um, but they have shared that with their teammates all year. Even in difficult losses, they've shared it. Um, so... The only difference now would be just it's just a little bit more exciting than at regular season or even a conference tournament. This is you better win or you go home.